let's talk about how exactly sugar feeds cancer. If you haven't seen my video on vitamins B2 and B3, you may want to look at that one to see how normal bodily processes use those two vitamins for a very essential anti-cancer process, a process that all of our normal cells undergo all the time, oxidative phosphorylation and the electron transport chain. Now don't worry about what each of those means, except that normal tissue uses that. Cancer arises when we have damaged machinery in the cell. The mitochondria, the structure here, which are our cell's power plants, become damaged, and energy can no longer be produced in a normal way in a cell that has become cancerous. The electron transport chain is basically shut down, which means that the food we eat takes a different pathway, a pathway that favors cancer, the lactic acid production pathway. The lactic acid production is made possible by, one, the damaged electron transport chain shuts off the main road here, this road here. It shuts it off to traffic, biochemical traffic of your incoming food molecules, that is. And so traffic of those molecules is forced to go a different way, this way. Or if you look at it like a dam on a river, the flow is blocked from the normal riverbed here and flooding has to happen over this way a way that favors cancer. Or rather, this is the pathway left available to cancer now that the normal pathway is blocked. That was the first thing that made cancer possible. Here's the second thing. Lots of sugar is eaten and drunk, especially through drinking. Maybe a huge soda or other sweet drink. We get a lot of sugar fast. This river is really flooding up here, but look at downstream. Uh-oh, that got blocked from damage to the electron transport chain down here. So we are not gonna go this way. Where do we have to go? The only place left is over here, the cancer pathway from pyruvate to lactate. This is a fermentation pathway that is now hugely used because of the massive amount of sugar that came in. There's only one thing to do with all of that sugar since it cannot flow directly downstream. It has to come here and it has to make cancer. The reason it has to make cancer when we have all of these food molecules especially a lot of sugar coming this way, is that cancer is kind of like a machine. It can take a lot of excess sugar and it can process that sugar quickly and get it over here with that sugar very fast. A lot of sugar hanging around the bloodstream can become toxic and throw off normal balances a lot. But if that excess sugar takes the cancer pathway and becomes lactic acid, then it is a little more tolerable for the body. And that is the cancer machine that goes there. This, folks, is how sugar feeds cancer. Way too much sugar comes in at once. You know your favorite treats. And then the only road available for that sugar to travel once it's in your body is this road here, because this main road is closed off from damage to the electron transport chain. Then we have conditions ripe for cancer to develop. Too much sugar coming into the system and damage to the normal way of getting rid of that excess sugar and having to take a lot of this alternative pathway. That's where the sugar goes letting cancer happen, and cancer allows the sugar to get processed away to lactic acid. So why doesn't exercise cause cancer if that also makes lactic acid? The reason is because it uses normal healthy tissue to make lactic acid, not cancerous tissue. In fact, there is a principle in chemistry that if you add end product of a chemical reaction, you shut down the reaction. Add lactic acid here, and you slow the traffic from here to here, from pyruvate to lactate. So exercise is generally helpful, and sweeteners do not belong in the body of the cancer patient because they feed this cancer pathway. Don't say later that I didn't warn you. I am Dr. Colleen Huber, it is May 18, 2018, and thanks for watching.